Okay, so what's up? Today I wanted to be a uh, fucking pencil hit for fucking SpongeBob, but it didn't so much work out. So, let's talk about Monster Reborn on my journey to venture out into 13 degree weather because I want Wendy's. Standard life and times of a fat shirt man wearing a Hawaiian shirt. You guys, you guys remember Flower Cardi and Robbie? That's not me today, I'm Purple Robbie. Gotta keep our canon stories correct. So, Monster Reborn. I have used the card once this format. I've also only played like eight games. But you know what? It's okay, because we Monster Reborn Deco Talker and we make Link Fourier. That's what he's for. <laughs> right? I, I've already been hearing horror stories about the return of Monster Reborn, and oh my god. You ever just watch Monster Reborn come down on the table targeting Fire or uh, targeting Borolo Dragon? And your opponent's just like, are you fucking kidding me, guy? Like, why you got to do that? And then we have cases of people not even playing Monster Reborn because it's quote-unquote too slow, you know? Pen some Pendulum decks are opting to not even play it. Of course, why would you? Because you're a Pendulum-based deck. Haha, <laughs> XD, the only thing going to your graveyard should be those Fresh Link monsters. So, the question I'm proposing and asking today is is Monster Reborn worth it? Now this isn't going to be another one of those snatch deal discussions. I got my asshole roasted for that the last time we did this. But is Monster Reborn too powerful? Dun dun dun! Will it be sticking around for a little while? Honestly, it in judgment. I mean, like they're powerful cards. Don't fucking get me wrong. But they're in the in the current format. They're not as good as they used to be. Monster Reborn gets a lot of fucking rogue. Oh, that's for fucking sure. I can Monster Reborn target Borlo Dragon and Keck and, you know, my power level over 9,000. But at the end of the day, it's just, it's kind of what it is. It's just, you're playing a card that doesn't really add anything to your going first hand. I mean, it's obviously a combo extender, and that's that's kind of what it, it can be. You know, if you didn't draw Soul Charge, but you opened Monster Reborn, you opened up the rest of your hand to just kind of explode. Well, you know, Monster Reborn can act as an extender for a Link 2 or a Link 3 to kind of climb you up your ladder with your combo. And that's exactly what it should be used for in scenarios like that. You know, that's that's kind of why I like Monster Reborn, because it's always been kind of one of those cards that, like, it can steal the game. Ironically, because that's what the season one use for Monster Reborn was, was to bring back your ace monster and shun your opponent's hopes and dreams. But on the flip side of the equation, it's also a combo extender. You know, Reborn, it, it's a very good card, but in Pendulum Magician, it kind of sucks butthole. Even so much in Metal Foe, you know? I I like the card in True Draco as well, but I mean, most of your things are vanillas when you revive them, but there's a reason why Return is at one for that deck. But back to my question. Is Reborn going to stay around more than one format? I don't see why not at this current point in time. It's it, it's a good card that gives a lot to those decks. As I said, it's a combo extender. Uh, it allows people to steal games, as any real sacky card in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh should be. God. Cards that do so much in one, it's almost like I get my battle phase with Monster Reborn. You know, but they've printed so many other effects like Monster Reborn at this point in time. I mean, look at fucking Call the Haunted. Call was at one at one point. They printed Back to the Front, Oasis of Dragon Souls. You know, they've, they've done a lot, you know, for for that effect. So, the fact that we have other Monster Reborns and shit coming back, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's causing any real issues, but I mean, what the fuck does fake Cole 40 know? Fucking fat guy not knowing anything. I almost said fat fuck but that would just be absolutely rude of me to call myself fat when I'm a young spring flower in the springtime of my youth. Right, guys? So, there's that. Mon Monster Reborn, it's, it's doing what it needs to do. It's pissing people off and making them want to quit Yu-Gi-Oh. Ha! If you're posting on Facebook saying, I got sacked by Monster Reborn, I'm quitting the game. Because fucking staples are fucking stupid. Yeah, you probably shouldn't be playing the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! If you're getting sacked by Monster Reborn, because that card shouldn't be sacking you. Unless you got into an incredibly skilled match where both players are top decking because you're both incredibly terrible and used all of your resources and grinded each other out into a pulp. My brother. <laughs> you know, that that should be the only time that you said your opponent out top decked you. So, I'll give you that one. But... There's that. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh is 
<laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh's fun, right guys? So, on, on the very same subject matter, our, our boy El Sol Judgmento has come back to the format. And I've been hearing the same thing about Judgment, actually, that uh, it's not so good. It, I don't know if, if I'm going to continue to play it. You know, it's, it, it's a very good card. You know, yeah, Judgment is a very fucking phenomenal card. It's the ultimate pay half of your life points. Fuck one thing. <laughs> you know, if only it could actually negate uh, resolution of effects, you know, like full, full things. That'd be great. Like, kind of like Strike could. But we have to only stop adherence with judgment. That would be hey, so nice. Can, uh, can I get another four, please? Uh, medium size, Coke, no ice, add onion on that. Uh, chili cheese fries, please. And then a junior bacon cheeseburger with no tomato, add onion. And that'll be it. Hi, Robbie. Hi. Right, pull around, man. I have a for you. All right. Aha. Service industry. I fucking love it amazing that we've reached the point in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! to where I'm just kind of like, eh, Judgment's kind of bad right now. I mean, then again, I mean, if you Judgment a Trickstar player, it's your own goddamn fault. <laughs> Lol. Oh, man, I... <sighs> if you don't side out Judgment against a Trickstar player, just like, what are you doing with your life? Because you know they're probably going to kill you. The only time I'd consider Judgment even moderately worthwhile is when you're closing out the game state against Trickstar. And they're on top deck mode, and you just negate whatever they would capitalize on. That would be my only, my only real value that I would want to even keep judgment in against. Because literally anything else, you're just you're going into the danger zone, and you're just not in the mood for that. You know, I'm not. So, judgment, judgment, kind of. I'm not gonna say it's fallen to the wayside, but it's a trap card. And traps are kind of incredibly terrible going second. You know, unless it's the case of Judgment, but the rest, the last five cards of your hand have to be able to close out the game and ensure whatever your opponent's doing on the next turn can be quote-unquote negated. Because if it can't, you're just, you're going into fuck me town and nobody wants to be stuck up that river without a paddle. So, the, so that I, I like how Monster Reborn and Judgment returning was the happiest moment of, like, my year. Actually, one of the happiest moments I've had in the game for Yu-Gi-Oh! for a very long time, because both of these cards I, I have immense memories with them, you know? Granted they've been used of me sacking people, or, you know, being sacked against you know, I told the stories about the Judgment Wars you know, you gotta remember, like when life points go into decimals, you round up to the next physical number a, a lot of life point numbers in the older days that should not have been achieved you know, I think the lowest I've ever been was, uh, I believe it was 13, no, yeah, wait, was it 13, 13 going down, divided by half, going 6.5, rounding up, I believe it was, it's either 7 or 13, I never remember anymore, it's been so long, but two of the oldest staples in the game have returned, I know y'all want Pot of Greed back, but I don't think Pot of Greed really deserves his glorious return, it's still... It's too much of a free, like, advantage engine. I mean, you already got the community arguing of fucking desires a neg nine or a plus one. So, well, logistically, it's a plus one, but you fucking tell that to the rest of the meme squad. They're like, never, no, you're, you're fucking stupid. Like, well, logic pertains that in the terms of card advantage. Uh, the only cards presently in your hand and on your field are all you count. They're like, no, you're fucking stupid. It's still a neg nine, like... And this is why you don't have a regional top, or let alone a fucking YCS top, because you're blinded by your own self-progressive knowledge, and you can't better yourself in the game by fucking negativity and connotations such as this. That's one of the. That's some real advice right there. If you want to advance in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, and you want to fathomly understand how to get better at this game, you're gonna have to understand ratios. You're gonna have to understand breakdown. You're gonna have to understand the best case scenario that you can make. You're going to have to be willing to make subpar plays sometimes because subpar plays will reward you. And that's something I've learned throughout the years. If it seems like an optimal play, just because it's an optimal play does not mean it's the correct play. There have been a lot of people that I've I've heard horror stories about quote-unquote pro players getting mad at their opponents because they're like, oh, well, you didn't make the correct play. Well, if they made the correct play, they would have lost. But because they made this subpar play, it won them the game. 
you know, then doesn't that become the correct play because it allowed them to go get the game? You know, as I said, optimization of play is not always key to the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, so a lot of times there are alternate scenarios that come up that we don't think about. You know, it's not all one linear way of thinking. It's just it's optimal versus suboptimal, and sometimes suboptimal just gets you there. So, just my two cents on Yu-Gi-Oh. So. What do you guys think? Yay! Monster Reborn! Tucker Borlo Dragon! Yay! They're back. Fucking, what a time to be alive. Hope you guys are enjoying week two of your new format. Kick back in your comment section. Tell me what you guys are thinking. And that's all I got, Duelist. Have a good day.